I'm so glad you're here. My name is Maria Goodman, and I'm a licensed midwife who specializes in supporting people getting pregnant through holistic fertility support and IUI services. In this video, I'm going to offer my five main recommendations for supporting basic fertility for people with uteruses. If you want more in-depth information, you can check out the book that me and my co-author Ray Rockland wrote called Baby Making for Everybody, Family Building and Fertility for LGBTQ Plus and Solo Parents, which will be published in April, 2023. First of all, I wanna say that there isn't anything that you have to do in order to get pregnant. I think that in our culture, we can pathologize things too quickly. And especially if you're a solo parent or a member of the LGBTQ plus community and you're trying to get pregnant and your only issue is not having easy access to sperm, it does not mean that you are necessarily experiencing infertility. I hear so many stories about queer people or prospective solo parents going into fertility clinics and automatically being lumped into the infertile population, which is problematic on so many levels. It can also put a weird energy around your conception process. It's awesome to have access to that care if people do end up needing support to get pregnant, but it doesn't necessarily apply to all people who are trying to get pregnant if their only issue is not having easy access to sperm. So I just want to start out this video by saying that there's nothing wrong with your body. And in my practice, I always assume that people are fertile unless there's some indications that they need some different levels of fertility support, like their cycle is not regular. And we'll talk more about that in the video. So you may be watching this video because you're just beginning your conception process or possibly you've been trying to get pregnant for a little while and haven't yet conceived. Either way, I hope the following five tips are supportive to you. Tip number one, support a regular menstrual cycle. So menstruating regularly is really important for conceiving a baby, especially when you're using donated sperm and need to be able to time your inseminations accurately. We'll talk more about timing insemination soon. If you aren't menstruating regularly, meaning that there is more than a four or five day difference between the length of your menstrual cycle each month, it can make it challenging to time inseminations and could possibly indicate other hormonal imbalances within the body. For people with irregular menstrual cycles, I have three tips that can help your cycle become more regular. And these are the herb vitex, acupuncture, and eating regular meals. The herb vitex is also known as chasteberry, and it is an herb that is native to the Mediterranean, but it now grows all over the world. People with uteruses have been using Vitex for centuries to help regulate their menstrual cycles and to support hormonal balance in general. And it's something that many of my clients have used to help regulate their cycles. I personally recommend getting the tincture form and taking one dropper full four times a day for two to three months. This in combination with my second tip for supporting a re regular cycle, acupuncture, can support a lot of people's overall hormonal balance and increase their chances of conception. So acupuncture and Chinese medicine in general has a really in-depth understanding of the body and it works particularly well for supporting people to balance their hormones. You can find an acupuncturist who specializes in fertility care, but most acupuncturists have a solid working understanding of how to support your fertility. You can also check out a community-based acupuncture clinic that may offer sliding scale, or lower fee acupuncture services. So then the third tip for supporting regular cycles is to eat regularly. So many fertility struggles are actually related to people having what's known as labile blood sugars. So that just means that their blood sugar gets really low and then really high and doesn't remain stable throughout the day. When our blood sugars are all over the place, it makes our bodies work harder and it messes with our hormones. So having regular blood sugar levels is one of the ways to really optimize our fertility. I recommend trying to eat every couple hours and focus on eating foods that have protein because that's one of the ways that our bodies regulate our blood sugar the best. It's also super important to eat a really nice big breakfast, something like eggs with a piece of whole grain toast with a bunch of peanut butter, foods that have some staying power that will support your blood sugar throughout the day. So a lot of people ask me whether or not they should get their fertility tested before starting to conceive. This is a personal choice and some folks want all the information that they can get while others would like to stay out of the medical system as much as possible. There's no right answer to this question, but I will say that if you are someone who doesn't have a regular menstrual cycle, it may make sense to get some blood tests done by a doctor or a midwife to check for things like baseline hormone levels, thyroid levels, and vitamin D levels, which can all affect our fertility. Number two, foods that support fertility. So now that I've already mentioned keeping your blood sugars stable, 
Let's talk a little bit about food. When eating for fertility, I always recommend trying to reduce processed foods as much as possible, to eat regular proteiny meals, and to try to eat a lot of healthy fats. These include avocados, walnuts, olive oil, and fish, among other things. All of these foods have been proven to really support fertility, especially for people with uteruses. Tip number three, stay hydrated. Drinking tons of water helps support our body's systems to function optimally, and it also helps us to process out any toxins that might affect our fertility. It's recommended to drink three to four liters of water a day, which is about six 16 ounce glasses of water. Most of my clients struggle to drink that much water, so here are a couple tips that I recommend for staying hydrated. One, have a water bottle that you like and try to keep it with you at all times. I personally love drinking water out of a bottle with a straw, so that helps me stay hydrated all day. I try to fill it up in the morning and make sure that I drink the whole thing by lunch and then fill it up after lunch and try to drink the whole thing by dinner and then have some more water before going to bed. Another tip for staying hydrated is to use some sort of electrolyte. You can buy sugar-free electrolytes at most stores, but there are lots of different options. You can even make some yourself, and I'll include a link to a recipe in the description below. Tip number four, gentle exercise. So I know that for some people, talking about exercise can be triggering, and this is by no means a prescription. I hope each of these recommendations supports you not only physically but mentally, emotionally, and spiritually as well. It can be really supportive to fertility to do some sort of exercise regularly. So some examples include going on a long walk or a gentle jog, doing some weight training, yoga, or dancing. These are all things that will support the different systems in your body to process out toxins and increase blood flow, as well as reduce stress. And all of these things support your fertility and overall health. When you're trying to get pregnant is not the time to start training for a marathon. Sometimes when we do super intense exercise, it can actually cause an imbalance in our hormones and it's counterproductive to our fertility. So I would not necessarily recommend training for a marathon while trying to get pregnant. Tip number five, which may be the most important, is to learn how to time your inseminations well. So whether you have a partner that has sperm and you are having sex to try to get pregnant, or you're using donated sperm from a sperm donor that you know, or you're buying frozen sperm from a bank, it is super important that you time your inseminations well. And this is especially important when you're buying frozen sperm because sperm that's been previously frozen doesn't live for as long in the body as sperm that's never been frozen. So tracking your fertility involves paying attention to your fertile signs like cervical position, basal body temperature, and cervical fluid, as well as using an ovulation predictor kit to time your inseminations. Ovulation predictor kits are available at most stores like CVS, and you can also order them online. This is a urine test that is super useful when you're trying to get pregnant because it measures the amount of luteinizing hormone that you have in your urine. Luteinizing hormone, or LH for short, is the hormone that you produce when you're very close to ovulation. So what's great about measuring your luteinizing hormone is that when you get a positive on the OPK, it means that you have enough LH to trigger your ovary to release an egg, and you'll know when it's time to plan your inseminations. When doing inseminations with frozen sperm, for most people, we recommend doing that insemination about 24 hours after getting the positive on the OPK. It is important to note that as we get older, the window between when our LH starts to rise and our ovaries release the egg gets shorter. So for my clients who are in their late 30s and early 40s, I usually actually recommend inseminating 12 hours after getting the positive OPK. If you are using a known donor with fresh sperm or you have a partner that has sperm, I recommend trying to do an insemination 24 to 48 hours before you expect to get that positive on the OPK. And then I recommend doing another insemination within 12 to 24 hours after getting the positive OPK. So this is because your donor or partner needs 24 to 48 hours to replenish their, their sperm supply. And sperm that has never been frozen can live for around 72 hours inside the body. So we always wanna get sperm inside the body before your ovary releases the egg so that it's waiting in the fallopian tubes. Another note, if you have a partner who has sperm or are using a known donor, is that I really recommend that they get their sperm tested. You wanna make sure that they have a normal sperm count and normal motility, which basically means that there's enough sperm and that it can travel. One other thing, um, it can take a few months to get a sense of your fertile signs and different people will use different information to track their fertile signs. Like some people love looking at their cervix. Some people have really reliable fertile mucus signs. Some people love testing their basal body temperature where they test their temperature first thing when they wake up 
before eating or drinking anything. And when you get a picture of all of these fertile signs, it's gonna help you know how to time the insemination as well. So we walk everybody through all of these different ways of tracking their fertility and putting it all together in our book, Baby Making for Everybody. Hopefully this is just like a little introduction to this concept, but for more kind of hands-on detailed information, you can check out that book. So I hope this information supports you and your conception process. Again, this is not the whole picture of fertility tracking, but I hope it just kind of gives a nice supportive picture of some suggestions for how to optimize your family building chances. If you can make some of these changes, I do think it will really support your conception process and I wish you all the best in building your family.